In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. So the coming of the kingdom is near, and Jesus is giving us clues as to the approaching time of the tribulation. And I want you always to ask yourself, why is our Lord doing this? Why is he giving us these clues? Why is he coaching us along in these things? It's because he is kind and he is gracious and he is doing everything he can to make sure that we are not caught unawares. Have you noticed, as I have, how many people discount God and even judge God harshly because in this life bad things sometimes happen to good people they say things like now come on if there was a God he would never allow thus and so to happen so we would always have an answer for those who say how could God let these things happen just look at him and say there's a day of reckoning coming don't worry, God will be making all things right. Evildoers will be punished for their evil deeds. And that's what the tribulation period and the hereafter is all about. An eternity in hell. Jesus is saying, these things I'm telling you about the kingdom of God, about the day of the Lord, about the tribulation, these things are carved in stone. And that stone will never ever pass away. This is going to happen. You better be ready. Heaven and earth will pass away before one single of my words could ever pass away. And this is why Jesus issues a warning. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap. Jesus gives us the strongest possible warning. Why is he warning us? Because he hates us or because he loves us? He loves us. Jesus is warning us against all sloppy living where the concerns of this world begin to draw our hearts astray from the matters of the kingdom of God. We must remember always that our Lord's promises of deliverance from the coming tribulation are conditional. So Jesus tells us what to do. And what he's urging us to be, brothers and sisters, is proactive followers. Keep alert, he says. You need a purpose. Keep alert. Keep spiritually alert. Keep your spiritual senses finely tuned at all times. At all times. You can't afford to be taking breaks. And pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. What are the coming horrors he's talking about? He's talking about the tribulation. He's saying, I want you to escape the tribulation. I want you to escape the coming horrors. The only way to remain spiritually alert is through prayer. When believers discount the call to be praying saints, they discount the warning, the gracious warning of our Lord Jesus Christ to stay alert. We cannot stay alert without establishing ourselves in a life of prayer and regular Bible meditation. There will be no pretenders on that day gathering with the Lord at the rapture of the saints. He wants us to be able to appear before him knowing that we've already been habitually abiding in his presence and it's there, there we shall continue to abide for all of eternity now as to the question of the rapture I really don't think there's any question at all does it make any sense at all, I ask you today, that our Lord should encourage us to live in such a way that we may escape all of these calamities 
if we were consigned to go through them all anyway. Now let's ask ourselves this. How are we then to live knowing that we are on the threshold of the rapture? Well, first of all, saints of God, we should live with great hope. Can I hear an amen? Now the next thing our Lord wants us to remember is that we should trust the teaching on this. We need to trust the teaching. He says, we tell you this directly from the Lord. We are still living when the Lord returns. We'll not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God. Why should we trust this teaching? He said, we tell you this directly from the Lord. Next thing, we should be encouraged by the teaching. We should not be downtrodden. We should be serious about living for the Lord every single day when we wake up in the morning. Lord, we pray, make this a day when I live for you every waking moment. Hallelujah. Now, how are we to live knowing that we are on the threshold of the rapture? We need to stay alert and clear-headed. Clear-headed. This is emphasized a couple times here. But you aren't in the dark about these things. You aren't in the dark. You should be ready. Yet how many churches even bother to teach these things of the end times nowadays? Why don't they teach them? Because they're not alert and they're not clear-headed. They're fast asleep. Are you ready to give an answer to someone who asks you the reason for the hope that you have of eternity. It has never been more imperative that we stay faithful in our spiritual disciplines, taking time for Bible meditation. And what do I mean there? Read the Bible thoughtfully. Read the Bible in the Holy Spirit. Read the Bible pondering its great message in the depths of your heart. Don't just read it to get it done for the day. Read it with the expectation that the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to your heart that will be life-changing. To live in the light means there isn't a single thing in our life over which we're fearing exposure. That we'd be dreadfully embarrassed if someone would find out. Being clear-headed means that we're not being swallowed up by the confusion of this present age. We live in an age when people stand for nothing and fall for everything. God's plan for you and for everyone you know and you love is to live with Him forever. But it's only through the gospel, amen? Now, how can you check your heart to see if you are ready for the rapture? Here's the question. Are you desirous above all else, above all else, to be with Christ forever? Be honest. This really is the acid test. These are the only ones who will be ready for the rapture.